place a floor and cone, edit through them, then build a wall and edit through that. All right. So it's three edits and what seems like one swift move. Pretty mind blowing stuff, man. What's going on, guys? This is your motivation guy. I'm back. The one and only Keith Allen, man. The guy who's rooting for you guys. The one that is cheering for you. The one who is your number one fan. Hey, don't forget, man. I'm here for you guys. I support you guys and I believe in you guys. So keep going. Never give up. Never surrender. So in today's video, all right, I'm going to be going over three editing techniques that are guaranteed to help you win more fights. Who wants to win more fights? I know I do. So I'm going to be focusing on the well-known triple edit and how you can master it yourself. But also I'm going to be throwing in a couple more bonus edit drills and tips that you can use to improve your edits and piece control. Oof. You know, all the moves that I'm going to discuss are useful in real games and in real fights. So they're definitely worth learning, guys. Plus, they do make for excellent practice and are a sure way to improve your overall editing skills, okay? So to learn it, make sure you stick around for the entire video. All right, guys, it's about that time. Ladies and gentlemen around the world, it's time to scream this out. Come on, it's time to sit back. Come on, Bunch of Crunch Army, relax and get some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that Bunch of Crunch. Oh, stay still. Let's get this going. Yeah. At Pro Guides, there is one thing that we're incredibly grateful for, and that's you guys. Yeah, you guys, the Pro Guides community. Without you guys, like our videos would have no one watching them, and our guides would never be used. So, to celebrate the release of Fortnite Season 3 and to give back to our Pro Guides community, we're gonna be holding another giveaway on the Pro Guides Fortnite Discord. In this giveaway, whoo, five lucky winners are gonna be in with the chance of getting a Fortnite Season 3 Battle Pass for free. I know this is a little late, but I know some of you out there really need this. So to enter this giveaway, all you need to do is subscribe to this channel with notifications on. Join our community subreddit and upvote the giveaway post, all right? Further instructions are in the Discord channel. Just make sure to follow all of them so you're in with the chance of winning one of the five battle passes that we are giving away. All right, guys, you guys take care. The giveaway ends on July 11th. All right, guys, so before we start, click like and check to see your subscribe with the notification bell on, all right? I want you to do that ASAP. And also, we're a bit, you know, into the new season, so I'm curious how many arena points you're at right now. Leave us a comment down below. Now, in case you've been living under a rock, <laughs> triple edits are where you ramp up, place a floor and cone, edit through them, then build a wall and edit through that. All right, so it's three edits and what seems like one swift move. Pretty mind blowing stuff, man. The first time you see it, it is so dope, but its purpose is to ensure you always have a forward path that can't be blocked off by enemies. And you might find it useful for high ground retakes, you know, ramping out of a box that's being pressured and really any time during a build battle to prevent any potential blocks from occurring, all right? So before we start, everything we're going to go over can be practiced on a regular creative island. But for the sake of convenience and some handy features that are going to improve your editing speed, we're going to get into that later. I suggest you use Crank Simulator by Immature Gamer. Okay, my friends, let's learn triple edits. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to do this. Here we go. First, we need to start with the fundamentals. So step one is to begin with floor edit drills, all right? Ramp up, attach a floor above you, and edit through it. All right, that's pretty basic stuff. As for how you edit the floor, you can choose between a one or two tile edit, both having their own advantages. Okay, so for a single tile, let's break it down. You don't have to move your crosshair at all, which can speed things up. But with two tiles, all right, well now you're clearing up more of the floor from your screen, which can prevent you mistakenly selecting the wrong piece. Doing a single tile might feel more comfortable, especially on a controller, but for the more consistent triple edits possible, you should practice the two tile edit. Train on both left and right sides, and once you feel that you can perform them without skipping a beat, you can move on. Now, real quick, every season that goes by, the competitive scene just gets better and better. So what we did is assemble a group of professional coaches catered to help you guys improve your mechanical skill drastically, all right? They're gonna teach you discipline and the fundamentals needed to take your game to the next level. So go visit ProGuys.com as soon as you can today. All right, so for the next step, we're gonna be working on double edits. Again, you're gonna repeat ramping up and placing a floor, but this time, follow up with the pyramid and edit through both pieces. So check it out. For the pyramid, you can select one or two tiles. Again, there's really no real benefit to the two tile edit here, but in the end, you can choose which one you prefer. 
Now, a lot of people still struggle with double edits and the main reasons are, you know, either their timing is off or because they switched to builds too early. In both cases, if you feel like you're continually getting stuck, do yourself a favor and just take it slow, all right? Seriously, practicing at walking speed. Crouch if you have to, or if you're on the crank simulator, just turn on the half speed button. That's gonna give you time to focus on the order you're pressing your binds. Heck, you even say them out loud as you hit them. I find that to be a massive help in graining patterns into my head. So, you know, when it comes to learning building techniques, that's really the most crucial aspect, memorizing the patterns. But once you feel like you've gotten double edits down at a slow pace, then that's when you can go back to normal. At a normal speed, being able to just double edit for every ramp you should place should be your goal. So like a non-stop ramp floor cone edit, ramp floor cone edit. Yes, it's tricky, but it's vital for mastering double and triple edits. So spend some time on it, guys. And when you're ready, you can move on. All right, so for the next step, my friends, did I tell you that I believe in you guys? I really do, so keep going. All right, we're gonna train the wall portion of the triple edit. Ramp up, and when you're about a third of the way up your ramp, place a wall that blocks your path off. Then edit either one of the bottom corners open to go through. One huge tip for quickly performing these is to practice your crosshair placement. As you go to place the wall, you want your crosshair to already be in the spot required to start the edit. That way it's gonna be very little wasted time and your edits can be as speedy as possible. But another tip to increase your editing speed is to practice tight crosshair movements, all right? So when you go to make the edit, your crosshair should be selecting the tile at a point where it barely has to move to get to the next. That way, your crosshair is moving as little as possible and you can complete them much quicker. Anyway, these wall edits aren't too tough, so just keep practicing until you feel more comfortable doing them without fail, all right? Don't speed it up, man. Take your time. This is your journey, all right? Take your time. Be comfortable. Finally, okay, so it's time for you to put everything together and start doing triple edits now, all right? Ideally, your piece order should be like this. Ramp, floor, cone, then edit through them, all right? Place a wall and edit through that. After editing through, you can follow up with another ramp or even do something like a quick jump and a 90 degree turn. Again, make sure that you're considering your crosshair placement and movement at all times, guys. Every time you finish an edit, your crosshair should be in the spot where you're ready to perform the next. And with your floor and wall edits, remember, keep it tight and minimize your crosshair movement. These two concepts are just like your bottom presses, a part of the overall pattern you're memorizing, okay? It needs to get to the point where you don't even think about what your crosshair is doing. You should just be moving it just instinctively. Getting to that point is tough, especially at normal speed. So just like with the double edits, don't be afraid to take it slow. Turn on the half speed modifier and just practice with that until you feel like you've gotten the full pattern memorized, okay? Then when you go back to normal, you feel prepared. But once you think, you know, you're somewhat consistent with triple edits, learn to chain them is the last step. It's sort of an optional step since you probably won't ever chain triple edits in a real match. But if you still like learning them, then here's a couple of tips we caught from Benji Fishy. First, he places the next ramp he's gonna be climbing before placing his wall. That way, when he's done editing, it's already there waiting for him. And second, after he completes his wall edit, he immediately adjusts his crosshair up so that he can just place the next floor and comb. Benji's editing skill is so insane, bro. You might even be wondering like how he got to that level. Well, his low ping definitely helps, that's for sure. But a majority of it is really practice. He puts in the time and he really isn't afraid to push himself. And that's what you should be doing, guys. Practice, practice, and more practice. And don't be scared to push yourself. Go for it, man. For example, like one way that you can really push yourself is by using the speed boost on Crank Simulator. By practicing at faster speeds, you're gonna force yourself to make inputs much quicker than usual. Then when you go back to normal speed, things are gonna suddenly feel slower and as a consequence, much more manageable. Think of it sort of, you know, as if you were like a soccer player training with ankle weights. It's sort of like, kind of like that kind of thing. I've never, I never played soccer, but I wanted to give that example. All right, on a final note, completing your first triple edit might take you 10 minutes, one hour or even longer, right? But don't get discouraged man like every step of the way just know you're actually improving that's right you really are even if it might not seem like you are you are 
And if at any point you feel like you're not making progress, take a break. Have some bunch of crunch, you know what I'm saying? Maybe play a game or just get off for the night, whatever. Then come back to it when you're refreshed and ready. You know, I got my bunch of crunch for that. All right, but if you're still having trouble, you can always talk with one of our coaches. They're all Fortnite experts and can really work with you directly to figure out what you're doing wrong and areas you need to improve on. All right, man, so to close out the video, we got a couple more bonus techniques for you. You guys ready? I'm hyped about this. Here we go. The first one doesn't really even have a name, so we'll just call it the ramp flip box in. Okay, so this move is something that we see top W carriers like Mitro and you know Benji Fishy do all the time. Basically, when they ramp rush directly over an opponent, they'll do three things. First, place both a ramp and a floor over the enemy. Second, they reverse their ramp and edit open the floor. And third, they place walls to block off the opponent's exit so they can just finish them off. Okay, so as for why you want to do this, if you don't put those walls down 90% of the time, the enemy is going to get away. And that just prolongs the fight. So by doing this, you could just finish your kills more quickly, which is what all of us want, right? But to practice this technique, first load into a creative island, then begin by placing a bunch of ramps one space apart to simulate enemy ramp rushes. And from here, and I mean like right here, all you need to do is just ramp up over them, place a floor, and pull off the rest of the technique. The hardest parts are easily flipping the ramp and aiming low enough to get those walls off. So if you're having trouble, try breaking up the steps to work on them individually, all right? As for how you should edit the floor, hmm, it doesn't really matter a lot since speed is the most crucial factor here, but if you have the option, choose the right hand tile so you could just give yourself the peaking advantage when you go to shoot. Also, just know that there is a second variation of this technique which uses a cone instead of stairs, right? This is more for inbuilt fights where you're not ramping over your opponent, but you're instead blocking them off from a distance. Since this variation is equally useful, you should definitely throw this into your training as well. But keep running those drills over and over until you feel like the entire process has become second nature. Then once you're in an actual game, you're gonna be able to do it for real. All right, finally, guys, the last technique. Here we go. I want to show you guys a straightforward method that you can use to fully box in any opponent behind your wall. Okay, to start, you make a wall edit, preferably either a corner or a window. Then place two cones, one on the bottom and one on top. After that, follow up by boxing in your opponent with walls. And once those are placed, you can either just rush straight in and just go for the gunfight or reset your wall and play it out from there. As for pulling this off, man, the mechanics required aren't really too tricky, but definitely work on your crosshair placement when building the cones. There's a sweet spot that you can position it, you know, to place both cones super quickly too. It's right in the middle and it really isn't too hard to figure out with practice. As for when you should use this technique, there are a couple of conditions I would look for. First, your opponent can't be looking directly at you. <laughs> if they are, they're just going to shoot you as, you know, you try to place those bills. Second, your opponent needs to be missing a significant number of pieces around themselves, all right? So, like if they don't have a ramp in their box or they're missing walls, that's when you try to use this technique. If they're fully boxed up and you feel like you can't really take advantage, then it's not going to work. Overall, this technique requires split-second decision-making to really pull off, which makes applying it the most challenging part of it, all right? So just like with everything else, spend time practicing to really get good at it. You know, we're always asked by you guys, especially on my Insta, how to improve your peace control. These drills are definitely one way, but you also have to remind yourself to actually use it in fights, okay? So as you play games or build battles, always try to keep the concept of peace control in mind. Look for missing pieces, okay? Look for edit opportunities, you know, that sort of thing. If you can do this, I assure your peace control abilities are going to improve. 100? Nice. I'm 1 HP, I'm 1 HP, I'm 1 HP. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I hope you enjoyed this video. Apply this to your real games, man, and you're going to see a huge, huge change. I promise you. Make sure to connect with me on my Insta at your motivation guy. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and spread the word about Pro Guys. It's going down. Peace.